Howdy. Today we're going to try to fit a Cessna 172 like this into a wind tunnel that's too small. Okay, maybe not that, but we will do the next best thing. We'll find out how to scale a model of the Cessna so that it can fit in the wind tunnel and what properties of air we need to change so that the data we get is actually usable. To do this, we will need to introduce flow similitude, or similarity as some say. The idea of similitude is that we can match the Buckingham Pi parameters for a model and an aircraft. These parameters are dimensionless numbers such as Reynolds number, Mach number, coefficient of pressure, and probably any other dimensionless number you've seen in your aerospace classes. Now, the requirements for something to have similitude is that they are geometrically, kinematically, and dynamically similar. Some textbooks roll kinematic and dynamic into just the dynamic part, so that's just a heads up. Starting with a geometric similarity, it's kind of self-explanatory. But for an example, let's take a segment from this NACA 2412 wing, which is what the Cessna 172 has. If we want to test this airfoil in particular, we wouldn't model it to a square. So the model needs to be the same shape entirely for the entire aircraft. And when you scale it down, it needs to scale linearly. In this case, changing the angle of attack gives different results, thus we need to preserve the orientation of the model to the aircraft also. As for the kinematic similarity, we need the streamlines to be similar in form, but scaled. Here we have an infinite cylinder and very low Reynolds number flow. We can scale this down, and we see that the streamlines are similar, but the speeds have increased proportional to the scale, so it follows the scaling laws. Moving to dynamic similarity, between the large cylinder and the small one, they had proportional forces, but when we increase the Reynolds number, we see we no longer have similar streamlines, but more importantly, by inspection, the forces are not the same as they were before, with the addition of the vortexes forming behind. So you need to do all three of these, geometric, kinematic, and dynamic, for the entire model. So, to ensure dynamic similarity, we take our dimensionless parameters and set the aircraft and model equal. One parameter might be what we want is the Mach number, which is the ratio of the free stream flow divided by the speed of sound. Another is the Reynolds number, which is the convective internal forces divided by the shear forces. There are others, but for this example we will just assume these are the ones we care about. We start with the aircraft properties. With the Cessna traveling 1000 meters up, we have these values along with B, the wingspan of 11 meters. Now we're going to try to make the wind tunnel with just sea level properties for now, and see how fast and how small we need to make the model. We begin with setting the Mach numbers equal, and we will assume that the specific heats are equal, and we are using air in both, so gamma and R can be eliminated, and then solving for U2, we get 63.22 meters per second, is what the wind tunnel speed needs to be. Now we move to the Reynolds number, setting equal again, and solving for B2, we get 10.05 meters. That wasn't much of a reduction, and the model is practically the same size as the plane. We need to do better. Let's say our wind tunnel is 8 meters wide, and we want some space on the sides, so we'll go with a 7 meter wingspan. Still big, but this is an example, so let's just go with it for now. What can we change in this equation to make B2 smaller? U2 is fixed due to the Mach number similarity, and mu would be hard to change, so that leaves increasing row 2. We set up the Reynolds again, and this time we replace the rows with the ideal gas law. Now we can find the pressure to set the tunnel to by solving for P2 we find we need 148 kilopascals to get similitude. Also, the density plugging back into the ideal would be 1.759 kilograms per meter cubed at this pressure. So we get to an important aspect of modeling, and that is typically the smaller the model you want to test, the more extreme the tunnel will need to be. So not only will you need to balance your pi parameters, you'll need to balance the cost of building a model and an expensive wind tunnel. Normally you won't be able to get both Mach and Reynolds number to match together. And when that happens, you do one with similar Mach 
and then one with similar Reynolds, and then extrapolate the two to find data that actually makes sense. The common parameters used in incompressible flow is the Reynolds number and the pressure coefficient. For compressible, it's the Reynolds, Mach, Prandtl, and specific heat ratio. And lastly, for boundary layer thickness, it's just the Reynolds and Wormsley numbers. So, if you are able to get similitude, the measurements, such as lift and drag, will be proportional to the real Cessna 172. Thus, the coefficient of lift and drag will be practically the same. But, one thing about similitude is that it's only as good as the assumptions you make. For example, if you don't think about compression, then you won't have a parameter to model it. And at high speeds, your data will definitely not reflect the real thing. This was just an introduction to similitude. And there are more applications such as modeling small systems with large models, and even modeling solid structures. If you enjoyed this, consider liking and subscribing. I plan to make more aerospace related videos in the future, and if you have any suggestions, please comment below.